Hello friends, let's talk about what's going on here in the fish room. Some of the new fish, some of the old fish, uh, some of the tanks that are getting moved around. There's a lot going on in here. Let's go ahead and get right into it with a lap of the fish room. Well, let's start here with the 29 gallon, which I'm using currently as a quarantine tank for some smaller fish that are going to end up in the 55 gallon planted tank. The fish are doing okay. I have had a couple losses in here in quarantine. You can see the rummy noses. They look a lot more colorful than when I first got them. And some of the rasboras. There's also a couple plecos in here. But this tank has uh, fully bounced back from what had occurred before, which you can see in a prior video. And is serving as a solid quarantine tank. I've removed the little tank that was here in this spot beginning to make room for the uh, 60 gallon, which is located right there. 60 gallon acry acrylic tank. That's gonna be going in this area right here as soon as I figure out what I'm gonna do with this 20 gallon, this 20 gallon rimless that is currently full of a recent batch of, uh, of fry. You can see them here. They're just everywhere. I thought there were four or five. There's, I don't know, 30 or more, maybe. So I'm gonna grow them out, probably take them to the local fish store, maybe keep a couple of the ones with the most unusual patterns and maybe some of the albinos. Here's another 29 gallon that's being used for quarantine. And I have a Buchochromus norotania in here that I picked up from Josh at Cunningham Tropicals. He's looking good. He was a little, uh, a little beat up yesterday. The, uh, the, the red tear actually knocked down the divider, and the divider was floating, was floating flat on the surface, and the, uh, the Buchanono was underneath this this filter, hovering. And uh, he took a few shots, but he bounced right back as soon as I put the cover back up. Except this time I reinforced it with some rock, some rock formations that'll hold it in place so that he will not be able to uh, knock it down. He's just a big bull, a big beast. Great fish. Definitely would have probably killed this guy if I hadn't spotted that that divider had, had fallen down. So he'll be in there for a few more weeks, and then I'll pull him out and put him in the 300. Got a lot of food here that I'm giving away from Cunningham Tropicals. I also have some of the foods I get from the aquarium co-op, like these freeze-dried uh, brine shrimp. Red Terror loves those. You can see here, give away some of this food during the uh, Saturday live stream. Here's the 90 gallon. 90 gallon rimless, another rimless tank from glass cages. Red spotted gold serum's looking good. He's really, really uh, blossomed since I took that red shoulder out that was harassing him. It's amazing the impact that stress can have on a fish. AC Hecali, first cousin to these albinos down here. These albinos are starting to look really, really pretty getting some red, you can see red on the body, on the fins, a little bit of an orangey red, even showing some of those thread fins, some of those trailers coming off of the dorsal. There's five of them in there. Electric blue acara. Again, a fish that's doing better since I removed the fish that was antagonizing him. I still plan on getting rid of the Buenos Aires tetras. I'm not sure if I want to use them as a uh, dither fish in the 210 gallon. They are small enough where they could be eaten by the Oscar. I wouldn't want that to happen, but maybe the Oscar would leave them alone. So maybe I'll put them in the 210 as a dither fish. Still debating about that, but I'm very excited about the way these Akaras are coming along with the spots on the body, the red, and the trailers. Very, very pretty. 
Ultimately, I hope to make this a discus tank. We'll see where that goes. It's on my list of 2024. But uh, there's a lot of things on that list. Look at those blue Congos. They got the blue Congos back there. Blue Congo Tetras. Again, picked up from Josh at Cunningham Tropicals. Beautiful fish. Might be three males in there. Everything's going well in here. Did you know I have a little auto in there? Very cute guy. Albino Pleco. One of the ones that were born here. I grew them out. Love sticking upside down. Got the neon blue uh, rainbows, dwarf rainbows. The Serpas, some lemons that I've had for quite a while now. Some good sized rasboras. Of course, a great selection of snails. Got some quarries in here, four or five quarries. See all these little pagoda snails. Some neons back there. I like the way this tank's coming along. The temple plants again are thriving. They seem to love my water. Several temple plants in there. I love the broad leaves. And they seem to thrive in my aquarium, so they're really glad I, I, I added them. So Manubius seems to be doing very well. Hornwort, I keep thinning, cutting it back and thinning it. I like it pretty much at this level. I don't like it when it overwhelms the aquarium. Here's an aquarium that was the old sump under the 210, just sitting here. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it, probably give it away or just keep it in case I ever need it for an emergency. Needs a good cleaning. Here's some more fish I picked up from Josh. These are the uh, Here's the Red Empress. You can make her out in this dimmer light. The big Eye Biter. And I have the, uh, the Fire Hap. They're all very active. They all eat, eat pretty well. Right now they're a little bit uh, sheepish because I added this additional divider. So I broke the 55 into three tanks because the uh, eye biter was going after the, the Red Empress too much. So just to give the Red Empress a break, I added that third divider, or that second divider rather, and turned the tank into three sections. So they're all doing their quarantine and solitary confinement. And then they'll all be added to the, two, to the uh, 300 gallon at once. I have a little Pleco tank here you, you folks ever, you hardly ever see. This was the first tank I set up when I got all those plecos from a friend of mine. This is probably the batch I'll take over to Aquatic Critter. Pretty good size. Pretty much ready to go off to the to the fish store. You know, I've got about a hundred plecos, so I got to start getting rid of some of them. Here's the 210 gallon. Beautiful Nicaragua. The geos going after each other like they usually do. Here's the dominant electric blue car that came over from the 90, looking absolutely beautiful. I've been keeping a close eye on him in this bigger tank with the bigger fish, but he's thriving in here. Seems to be anyway. There's the red shoulders, Severum I mentioned earlier, that was harassing the uh, red spotted gold Severum. Seems to be doing well in here. He continues to show those bars on a lighter background and more prominent red behind the gills. I love the way he looks in this tank. A little Jack Dempsey hiding there. Jackie Dempsey, it's a female. Big Oscar. A couple big Oscars, they seem to hang out like buddies, which is good better than having them fight. I've got a couple uh, little face-off going on here. These two always face off. They never really engage, but they always face off. That's my 
fire mouth, trying to be a tough guy. Unfortunately for him, he's not going to get too much bigger. Big Vieja just ignores him. A little green tear back there. They were just fed. All the fish were just fed. So if you see a little, some particles floating around, that's what you're seeing. Got these big silver dollars, they've really gotten big in this tank. Put them in as a dither fish and they've thrived. They kind of school together. There's the Salvini back there being shy. We can go around so we can catch her. She's here in the shadows. Beautiful fish. Nobody messes with her. Despite being smaller, she's pretty dominant. And there are fish in here that are much bigger than her. I mean, the chocolate's much bigger than... They're all... All of the larger fish are bigger than the Salvini, but, but she doesn't back off from anybody. The Vieja just ignores her. There's some food dust floating around in the 300. And the fish are scrounging around for it. After you feed them, they usually will work the substrate for 20 minutes, trying to get every little morsel. So you don't really need any real uh, catfish or anybody working the substrate in an African cichlid tank. They, they tend to uh, keep that substrate turning over also another reason why you really can't have plants apart from the fact that they'll tear the, the plants apart by biting and tearing at them they also will dig them up little uh, Venusas back there and, and an older gar here comes the trout Bucochromus dragatus this uh, Bucochromus rhodesii yellow is just absolutely gorgeous some of the fish I picked up from uh, James Largo at the Cichlid Shack. Big Fusco. Just love the coloration on that on that guy. Really on all these guys. Strigatus are beautiful. I really hope the uh, the mood of this tank, the vibe of this tank doesn't change much when I add those new cichlids. We'll see what happens, we'll see how they, I mean, there will be some initial chasing, some establishing of dominance, but hopefully after that's over, it'll settle back down into being a, a, a relatively peaceful tank. There's a tremendous amount of water movement See at the top, there's there's a lot of water movement with the uh, outputs from the sump. And I have an FX6 on here too, so there's a lot of water movement and I, I think that might be helping to distract them to some degree, but, but I think by adding more fish, this tank will look a lot better. It certainly can hold more fish. 300 gallons, seven feet across. So there's the update, hope you enjoyed that. Be sure to add your comments, thoughts, ideas, tips below. I do read them, we do learn from each other around here. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Every Saturday for about an hour at 11 a.m. Central, we get together with a great group of fish keepers and talk about everything regarding fish keeping. And uh, it's a lot of fun. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and consider becoming a Patreon a monthly Patreon supporter starts for as little as $3 a month. The details are under the video. And for my best tips on fish keeping, be sure to check out this playlist up here. And for uh, my most recent video, check right here. And for the video that's been selected by YouTube as best for you, right down here. And lastly, if you'd like to subscribe, hit me in the mug right here and you'll be subscribed. Thank you, my friends. Bye-bye.